and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. The end of the work week. And it is Friday, October 29th. The 30th Friday of Ordinary Time and the feast day of the Douay Martyrs. Excuse me. That is a name that is applied uh, by the Catholic Church of uh, to the 158 Catholic priests. Um who are trained in the English college at Douai, France, and they were executed by the English state between 1577 and 1680. Um, so, just over a 100 year time frame. But having completed their training at Douai, they, many of them returned to England and Wales with the intent to minister to the Catholic population, um, as what priests do. And uh, under the Jesuits Act of 1584, the presence of a priest within the realm of the area was considered treason. Just their presence. So, um, because they were, they were looked at as if they were going to overthrow the the queen, but they were simply spreading the faith, you know. So many of them were arrested under charges of treason and conspiracy conspiracy, and eventually torture and execution. So um, that's for the 158 martyrs from or of Douay. Today's gospel is from Luke chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. On a Sabbath, he went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. In front of him, there was a man suffering from dropsy. Maybe it's dropsy. Jesus spoke to the scholars of the law and Pharisees in reply, asking, Is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. So he took the man and said, So they, so he took the man, and after he had healed him, dismissed him. Then he said to them, Who among you, if your son or ox falls into a cistern, would not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? But they were unable to answer his question. So, and it says right here, dropsy is an abnormal swelling of the body because of the retention and accumulation of fluid. There we go. It was like a cyst, maybe. Um, you know, what's interesting here is that, you know, you know, these Pharisees and scholars of the law are so attached to this law that they're missing the point like what's the point of faith in god because they're they're putting all these rules 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 and by the book 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 but they're not understanding what relationship with god truly means um and so jesus is kind of calling them out and he tries to rationalize it with them by saying you know if your son or ox falls into a cistern so he talks about your son like the closest to you to make it that personal, but then also an ox, which is merely an animal, a brute animal, and yet you'd still go after that. So why are you critiquing whether I'm healing somebody from their con sick condition on, on, on the Sabbath? So let's see what the, the word among us has to say today. It says, he took the man and healed him. The man whom Jesus healed had dropsy. Nowadays, the word edema is used but both words refer to a buildup of fluid in the body that causes limbs to swell, joints to stiffen, and movement to, be, movement to be hampered. The Pharisees who witnessed this miracle would have known Jesus' view of healing on the Sabbath because the question had already been asked and answered to their humiliation. They weren't likely to welcome such a healing the second time around. But still, Jesus was offering them an invitation, this time to seek their own healing. It's an invitation for all of us to be healed of spiritual bloat and stiffness so that we can deepen our relationship with the Lord. It's easy to settle into a fixed, familiar understanding of who God is and what He wants. But more than anything, what He wants is an intimate and fluid relationship with us, one that moves and grows and matures daily. So Jesus wants to heal anything that hampers our movement toward Him and with Him. Today, Jesus is inviting you to consider your spiritual health. If you ask him, the Holy Spirit will show you where he wants to reduce swelling or stiffness in your spiritual life. Perhaps a hint of, oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, 
has begun to swell your self-image, or maybe satisfaction with a hurried reading of scripture or a rote recitation of prayers at Mass are stiffening your walk with the Lord. You don't have to live this way. Jot down that area of spiritual dropsy and tell Jesus, I want to move freely with you. The Lord's invitation to seek healing isn't reserved for particular days or particular people. It's for all his children for every day. It's for you. The Pharisees kept silent in answer to Jesus' invitation. You have the opportunity to say yes. Let your response today be a joyful, grateful prayer to the one who heals you and invites you to walk more freely with him. Jesus, thank you for inviting me to know you more. Heal me of anything that hinders my walk with you. Have a great Friday, everybody. God bless and keep it real. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.